as Christians, we actually have this divine life in us. Um, so we don't have to keep living by our like, you know, by ourselves in our sinful way. Um, but we can turn to the, to, to the Lord who is in us um, and to live by this divine life. Um, mm-hmm. and we don't have to try so much in ourselves to be good, but we just turn to the Lord and he's the one who is able to do it in us. Amen. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of in the beginning, you know, like in Genesis, right? Like when there were two trees, right? The tree of life and the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you know, um, just reminds me like no matter how much good we want to do is still in the wrong realm, right? So here with Nicodemus, you know, he was a moral man, but morality is not going to get you to inherit salvation or mm. to be born again, you know? You need to be born again with another life. And like mm. Zoe said, this is the divine life, right? Which it, it, it kind of takes me back to the, to the beginning of, you know, again, Genesis, right? Which is the tree of life, right? So, you know, a lot of times we think like, oh, doing good, you know, even like, you know, doing good, like in, uh, in Jesus name, or it's still out of our own uh, ability. Mm. But um, I think the point here is to, to be those who exercise uh, living by another life, a higher life, which is mm. God's life. Amen. I really like that the being good in a wrong realm. That's like hits deep and I feel like everything happens for a reason and this scripture actually does mean a lot as in like Okay, the spirit is in everyone. In the, I mean, in the uh, sorry, in the text, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just see it as it just hits deep. Sorry, I'm I'm losing words. Like at a loss of words, it happens. <laughs> but yeah, and then light. I like I enjoy that light really does um, expose like devilish moves. like people who aren't like don't have good intentions, you know, they hide in the dark and then light's there to like reveal them and that we move towards the light and we become truer in who we are, I guess. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Well, okay, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Now I kind of like gathered my thoughts together. Um, yeah, it's really deep though. Um, I actually want to go through like verse 19 through 21. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And for everyone who, who practices evil does not come to the light or hates the light and does not come to his light. Um, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does truth comes to light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Um, it really shows here like that repentance is actually necessary. Admitting one's faults or one's sins is the first step to actually believing in Jesus. So like when we look at this in context from verse 16 all the way to 21, we see that belief has to be accompanied by repentance. There's no belief or true belief in Jesus Christ unless there is some sort of like repentance or some sort of willingness to admit to admit that we've been in the dark or that we've been under the power of sin or been we've been sinning. You know, so I think like that's a really important thing when I look at this in in context in like very pure in a pure heart, like I approach this passage. You know, um, another thing is that um, is that verse 36, John 3, verses 36, it says, He who believes in the Son should have everlasting life, but he who does not believe in the Son should not see life, for the wrath of God re- abides on him. Um, it really shows here that, um, that Jesus is in control when I look at that passage, is that Jesus is Lord. 
you know, one of the things that people say is that when you're in hell, you're separated from God. Now that's partially true because you're separated from the love and the joy and the goodness of God. But at the same time, you're still under the wrath of God because God controls everything. You know, if you're on his side, it's of course good. If we believe in him, it's good. But apart from him, there's also, you know, still God's wrath. You know, he's still in control of like, Every, everything in creation is sub, subjected to him. So, so yeah, so it just really shows like how powerful the name of Jesus is and how much in control Jesus really is. Amen. blows my mind how since the old testament mm. that was able to um show us part of his plan in the future with the serpent how um lifting the serpent up represents jesus being crucified and how salvation comes from jesus which is represented by the snake um, and throughout the old testament we're able to see different um events that symbolize jesus Crucifixion. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Iris, you want to share something? Mm. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I say something else? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was going to say how um, I really admire Nicodemus because he was able to mm. humble himself and be brave enough to ask Jesus and go and speak to him. And also because he he was asking Jesus, like, can you explain me this? Like, I don't understand anything. He wasn't trying to understand it on his own. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was willing to, to listen and to um, receive. Yeah, receive. Um, and I feel like sometimes we try to understand things in our own um, knowledge and wisdom instead of asking God to fill us with his wisdom and mm -hmm. his mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that's a good point. Like, yeah, if sometimes if we don't understand something or we don't know what to do, like, we can just be honest with the Lord and tell him, that we don't understand and ask him to come in to be our wisdom to be our supply yeah because if we if we're just trying in ourselves we're bound to fail because <laughs> it's just part of our 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 human nature but yeah we just come to the lord just as we are and let him be the one working in us mm -hmm. I just personally love the, the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just finished reading it um, yesterday, actually, oh, okay. front to back. And it, it, it amazes me. I mean, this chapter has the most one of the most famous verses in the Bible, and in John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking at it now, just... God just loved, just, God just loved us so much that he was willing to give up his son um, and allow him to be on this earth and walk among us and die for us. It's absolutely un unbelievable to me um, that God would do this for us, his creation, when we originated the mess up. Um, it wasn't God who imperfectly designed us. No, God perfectly designed us um, so perfectly that he gave us free will. Um, and it was her decision. And for him to say, enough is enough, here's my son. Um, it just boggles my mind how much God loves us. 
and how much he gave up for us to so that we could be with him. In the verse 16, which is a you know, very well-known verse, it says, for God so loved the world, and that's the purpose, um, that he gave us his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So when we uh, receive God's gift, and that is uh, God's only son, what do we get? Um, Instead of getting the son, I mean, not just instead, but you know, uh, in addition to getting the son, uh, we have eternal life. We have eternal life. This, this is, uh, you know, this matter of eternal life. I feel like this is really the the key of this uh, chapter, this gospel. Is that God wants to give us eternal life, and the reason that Jesus came is that we might have eternal life. But eternal life is not something that after we die, then we will possess eternal life. Eternal life is something that we we get once we believe, right? Because it says, if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. And, and the first session also shows us that when we believe, when Nicodemus believes, he will be born again. And what does that mean to be born again? That means you have a different life in you, right? Now, when I was first born, uh, I have the life of my father and my mother in a physical sense. Um, but uh, when we are born again, we have the life of our heavenly father. So born again means actually the same thing, is to receive the eternal life. So today, um, eternal life is for us to um, to enjoy, uh, to to receive, to um, possess. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, when we are born, we are just a little baby, and and every day we need to grow. Right. So on one hand, we have the eternal life, but on the other hand, we need to have a further possession of the eternal life by growing every day. So this this is a really good verse. Yeah, 316. Uh, but the key, I feel that the most important thing is this matter of eternal life. And this is something that we can possess today. We can enjoy today. You know, uh, I just want to mention this, but in Romans 8, 9, it says here, but you are not in the flesh, but if in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. And this is really important. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. And it's just really clear right there. Like we have to be born again to be after we believe. It's like trust. We put our trust in God and then the born again experience is automatic because it says if you believe you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent, repentance and belief and then the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's really, really great to have the Holy Spirit in me because it's like the Holy Spirit is like, it says like he must increase but I must decrease. That process starts once we receive the Spirit. Christ increases in me and then I become stronger in my walk, in my Christian walk. And I, I can overcome sin. I could overcome what the devil has against me. And he is the conqueror of sin. He is the conqueror of the power of sin. And it's great to have the Holy Spirit. And it's such a, tra it's so cool to have the Holy Spirit. You know, it's just so like life transforming. How can he increase in us every day? He must increase in us. I must. So, <laughs> what's our experience of uh, allowing Christ to increase in us? I guess for me, um, it's putting down the things that were distracting me from, mm. from Christ. Mm. Um, and even that, I still struggle with, um, 
even today, just how many times I want to look at my phone, you know, it is my birthday. So people like send me a message like during this and um, I just really want to look at it and like reply and like thank them. But I realize I just need to put it down and focus on, on God's word and dedicate some time to him. Mm. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the word is definitely uh, milk to, my, to us. The yeah. word is the food to us, uh, bread to us. Lasciviousness, which is walking away to cause people to lust, lasciviousness, idolatry, which is image worship, 
But I, I'm going to do this when I walk out a whole lot and I walk out in the mirror. That might have been image worship, idolatry, witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, the Greek there is uh, pharmakia. You know, we are uh, meth, heroin, pharmakia. All that. Drugs. Pharmakia, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, uh, wrath, drunkenness. Whoever practices the sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. Adultery, fornication, drunkenness. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. God gives us the sermon right there, Galatians 5, but it says that the fruit of the Spirit that walks contrary to those things is love. That's crazy. So, like you're telling me, adultery, fornication, and drunkenness is fundamentally opposed to love? Yes. Adultery, fornication, and drunkenness is fundamentally opposed to love. Love, joy, peace. Long suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Those, man, those who practice such things are not under the law, meaning you will not be judged. Thank you, Jesus. Who tells the gospel of the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God does not send his son to the world to condemn the world. That the world through him might be saved. And all of a sudden Paul says, But I am a wretched man, because that evil thing I know I'm not supposed to be doing. That I've been trying not to do. I find myself I'm always doing that. And that good thing I know I wish I could be doing, I always am trying to do. I can't do it. Who will, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only by walking in light with Jesus, by being born again, by yielding to His Holy Spirit, walking according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh, can we actually do those things that our conscience tells us to do. Ecclesiastes 9.18, the Word tells us that one sinner destroys much good, and even the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. That means apart from Christ, by the way I live my conversation, the things I do, the things I hold valuable, it's actually cruelty apart from Christ. I'll leave people to think that the way to really have satisfaction is in their sexual identity. Did you know that after someone has an operation, the likelihood of suicide goes up 20 times? That is cruel to lead someone down that path. That's why I said the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Because really, you're not intending for them to commit suicide. It's really from a place of apathy. And you say, do whatever you want, and they go down this road. It's not love, it's apathy. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. And that's what we do when we live in this world, according to the court of the world, not according to Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Jesus loves you, O Lord. Let's be loved.